Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. This week we're covering the website Rotten Tomatoes. A lot of folks don't seem to understand how it works, so we're going to dive into their unique system and how to read their site with a full understanding. Let's zoom out first. There are reviewers or critics all over the place. It's most prominent in newspapers, with every paper having a team of film critics or at least one solo movie expert that reviews films. In the olden days, you would read a paper and trust their expert or maybe compare several papers. That became a bit tedious, and in the age of the internet, people wanted to see comparisons quickly. So in 1998, the website Rotten Tomatoes was born, essentially just a place compiling movie reviews from all the major papers. This expanded, including smaller papers and even websites. Now it even includes prominent YouTube reviewers as the way movies are reviewed continues to evolve. Now it's great to look and compare scores, but maybe you just want to see an average. Out of 100 newspapers, how many liked this movie? This is where the tomato meter comes in. This is what we see next to the movie's title. If most reviewers seem to like it, over 60% of them, you'll see a high percentage and a fresh symbol, a red tomato. If most reviewers didn't enjoy the movie, under 60% of them you'll see a splat, a rotten tomato symbol. Each reviewer might grade differently, so when the reviews are submitted to Rotten Tomatoes, it includes a fresh or rotten indicator. So the movie Assassin's Creed, for example, right now has a 17% and a rotten symbol. Let's look at what that means. A 17% in this example doesn't mean that the movie is scored 17 out of 100. This isn't a score. It's a percentage of how many reviewers liked the movie. So it could mean that 17% gave the movie a passing score. Though 17% could have given it an A+, while the remaining 83 could have given it a C-, minus, or whatever equates to a rotten score. A C- minus average is better than a 17% would lead you to believe. Let's look at the opposite example. La La Land has a 93% right now. Again, this doesn't mean it was scored 93 out of 100 on average. 93% of reviewers might have given it a B, which is considered fresh. A 100% could mean every single person thought it was fine. That's why it's important to know what the percentage means. It's not a score, it's an average out of how many reviewers gave it a quote-unquote fresh rating. If you want to weed out some of the smaller scale reviewers, you can also look for people marked as top critics. What this means is that these critics are employed by newspapers with mass circulation or websites with incredible traffic. Their publications are prestigious and have massive reach. The other symbol you can look out for while you browse is the Certified Fresh logo. This means it's received enough reviews that it'll be for sure fresh in the 75% range or higher. It also requires that five or more of these top critics agree that it's fresh. It means you can generally assume it's a good movie that enough people agree. Let's talk about some specific instances. I'm in a lot of circles discussing comic books, and Rotten Tomatoes comes under fire for giving DC movies notoriously bad ratings. But here's what you need to understand. Rotten Tomatoes just averages these scores. It didn't give anything. So when a movie gets a good or bad score, it means that enough reviewers liked it or disliked it to warrant that score. Also, interesting note, Warner Brothers used to own Rotten Tomatoes, but sold the company to Fandango. Though they still have a share in the company to this day, so the bias you would think would be for DC movies if any bias did indeed exist. At this point, you're likely wondering about the worst of the worst. Many of the 0% scores you'll never have heard of, but the most recent example is Adam Sandler's direct-to-Netflix movie The Ridiculous Six. While it got 0% of the critics, 30% of the fans seemed to enjoy it. So I guess it exists for somebody out there. On the opposite end, which movies have a 100% score? Classics like Singing in the Rain and Citizen Kane are on that list. More recently, both Toy Story and Toy Story 2 have 100% while Toy Story 3 has a 99%. It's very rare, as people have differing opinions and tastes, meaning that there's usually a handful of folks that dislike even the most loved of films. There are also shocking movies, movies that you would think would have relatively high scores, movies you'd think would be classics. The Boondock Saints has a staggering 20%. Even the classic Home Alone only has a 55%. This reaffirms that these ratings are opinions, and sometimes opinions wildly differ. So do you use Rotten Tomatoes to make decisions? Is there a certain critic or reviewer that you trust over any others? 
While I'm not legit enough to be a contributor to Rotten Tomatoes, this is a reminder that I do review over 70 movies a year on my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, at IAYTD. So give that a look if you want some recommendations. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Where's the